There have been some incredibly cursed cocktails that came up on Critical Role uh, over the past few years, and today I'm making two of them. The cursedest cursed cocktails in all of Exandrian history. I'm dragging this cold open out because I don't want to make these drinks. I'm dragging my feet. Let's just... Maybe we can just live in this cold open... Oh, shit! <laughs> Let's tackle what I am certain will be the most cursed cocktail in the history of how to drink. Let's talk about Eldermancy. Now this drink, if it can be called that, was created by Sam Regal in an ad read he did for, well, Eldermancy, who were doing a Kickstarter for a D&D 5th edition book called Guide to the Twisted Taverns. The Kickstarter campaign is now funded and closed, but the book is available for pre-order. I'm gonna include a link below. It sounds like the sort of thing you might be into if you're already watching the show. I pre-ordered a copy for myself. Looking forward to reading it. Sam made a drink called the Eldermancy. Now, they didn't ask me to, but I've created a <laughs> signature cocktail <laughs> called the Eldermancy using the letters of their name. Literally though, since the minute that went out live, people have been asking me to make it myself. And I'm not really sure what the intent is here. Am I supposed to just make it, am I supposed to make it better? Or am I supposed to just do what he did exactly and subject myself to the same torture? I think probably you just want to see me drink this nightmare juice um, and be tortured by it. And I'm going to level with you. I haven't tested it yet. Why would I? Why would I test this? I already know what goes into it. Um, and I think that that first reaction probably should just be on camera. Now, he free poured everything, but he does call out measurements as he goes. So do I do as he says? Or do I do as he does? Yeah, we're going to do with what he said. I think we're going to follow along with his directions to the degree that we're capable here. He starts by calling for an ounce of elderberry liqueur and what he pours appears to be a commercially available product. But of course they kept their labels covered and I can't see it. Here's the problem. Frankly, I am aware of zero, zero commercially available elderberry liqueurs. Elderflower, yes, of course, but berry? Uh, no, I've never heard of an elderberry liqueur. I asked my friends at Curiata, and you can go there and buy many of the spirits I use on this show if you're trying to follow along at home at drink.curiata.com. Guess what? They didn't know of any elderberry liqueurs either, and they're way more plugged into, you know, the global drinks spirits market than I am, and they said, no, I don't think there is one. So I had to make my own, and here it is. This is my elderberry liqueur. And I'm not questioning that his elderberry liqueur was elderberry because it looked exactly like this. I just, I want to know, Sam, did you, did you make your own elderberry liqueur for that? <laughs> this is pretty simple and it's a really good, by the way, this is a very good way to make any liqueur you want, right? Order some fresh or frozen elderberries. Um, the dried ones, I don't think will yield the same result, but I got fro frozen elderberries online. Um, I don't think that your grocery store has elderberries in it unless you have a very very gourmet, well-stocked grocery store run by a woods witch. So I got some pounds of elderberry. I put it into a one liter swing top jar that I use for infusions. I did 400 grams of Everclear, and then it was like another 400 grams of elderberries filled the jar right to the top, and I let that kind of sit overnight. And then I put the whole thing into a, um, a nut milk bag, and I squeezed it, and I got 600 grams of infused uh, Everclear back, right? So that was by going from 400 to 600, that should have dropped our ABV by about 20%, 25%, something like that. Then I added um, 300 grams of water and 300 grams of white sugar, and I blended that until the sugar was dissolved. That should have, if I'm at this right, I mean, it should be about 25 or 30% ABV, right where you want it to be for a, um, for a liqueur. It's not great tasting, I just, I, but I do think it tastes like elderberry. I, th I ate some elderberries, I don't like them. I don't think they're very good, uh, but this is elderberry liqueur and uh, I need an ounce of it, okay? I assure you, this is, I mean, I put way more effort into this than I should have, but here it is, elderberry liqueur. It might actually qualify, um, it's, its sugar rating might make it actually mean that this is elderberry cream. This might be a creme de elderberry because it's very high in, in sugar. Um, I apologize if, you know, Eldermancy purists are offended by my use of a creme de elderberry versus an elderberry liqueur. Next, we need one ounce of lemon juice. It's preferably freshly squeezed, but this'll, this'll work. I am gonna go with the fresh. Uh, once again, doing as he says and not as he does. So we need one ounce of lemon juice in our Eldermancy. Powerful pigments in that elderberry. Just a little drop left in my shaker made that very purple. He calls for a splash of dry vermouth. Let's say that that's a half an ounce, right? Uh, 
a splash. I don't know what a splash is, but here we go. A half an ounce of Dolon Dry. Boom. And uh, now it starts getting pretty weird. This is oh, espresso? No. no. Oh. Fine, sure. A whole shot of espresso, why not? I found out today that my espresso machine is broken and uh, it's a real disappointment, so we had to go buy some espresso. So here we go, a shot of espresso, the whole shot of espresso from my local coffee house. Just pour that right in there. Next we have rum for R. Uh, the bottle they're using is very obviously Picardi Silver. He calls for a shot. Now when most people say shot, they mean an ounce and a half roughly, right? So that's okay, fine. We'll get an ounce and a half of of Bacardi Silver. I'm not even sure this is gonna fit in my shaker because there's some huge pours coming. Next, we get to Mezcal for the letter M. Sam calls for two shots, two, two, two shots, and his hands are very heavy here. Whoa. <laughs> Fine, two shots, three ounces of Mezcal, and I'm gonna go with Dos Hombres. I don't think it matters. For the record, I know exactly what this is, what's gonna be the most dominant flavor in this drink at this point. Like nothing else we've done at this point matters. We're putting three ounces of mezcal in here. This whole thing now tastes like mezcal. It's gonna be purple mezcal. Then he randomly decides to call for what he, he describes as three shots of absinthe. Three shots of absinthe. Even if we were using equal parts with absinthe, you will taste nothing but the absinthe, okay? Nothing, but fine. Fine, three shots. That's four and a half ounces of absinthe. That's like, that's a lot of absinthe. That's an insane amount of absinthe, right? That's enough absinthe for, you know, six people to have a drink. Here we go, four and a half ounces of absinthe. It smells like burning leather from hell. And my shaker's very full. It's a very pricey cocktail. Uh, for N, he uh, uses Newcastle Brown Ale. Now, this surprised me. I, I looked around. Um, I, I don't think I've ever, until this week, in my life, I've never been to a liquor store or beer shop and not seen Newcastle Brown Ale, but not this week. I couldn't find any anywhere. So I needed an ale that started with an N and I found a North Coast Brewing uh, Red Ale. So this is close enough to Newcastle Brown Ale. And I very strongly want to not add this in my shaker uh, because one, my shaker is pretty full at this point. And two, if I put anything carbonated in here, it's going to explode. And since I shoot this alone, I have to clean that up. So we are going to insist on modifying the recipe. This will go into the mug once the drink is poured, right? He then calls for a cherry for garnish, but he puts it into the shaker. It's possible that pulverizing that cherry is the secret to this whole thing working. You know, that could be the trick. And then now the P.S. de la Resistance yogurt. No! no! looked like Stony Brook Organic, or Stonyfield. Stony Brook is a brand I invented, but it did look like Stonyfield Organic Greek yogurt. So that's what we've got here. I don't know how much is the right amount to put in there. I think I'm just gonna go with a couple of bar spoons. If I had a gallery here, like he did when he was doing this for real, there'd be a lot of screaming at me right now, I think, because they were screaming at him to not do what he was doing. I think that's enough. It's also as much as my shaker will hold. This is a very fancy drink for a very discerning individual. Um, I think that Sam, you're showing me up. I'm glad to learn your secrets. So let's shake this with ice. He actually shook it dry. Shake it, shake it. I'm not so bold, sir. I like my Eldermancy cocktail chilled and slightly diluted. Let's get some ice and dilute that. I mean, you're twice the man I am. I can't, no, sir, no, sir. I need it with ice, I, I do. Oh, there's the, that's the good stuff there. All right, there we go. Oh, God. Yeah, it's a good thing I didn't add the beer to it. It's already kind of exploding. It looks very fancy in there. I thought about drinking this right out of the shaker like he did, or I don't know, but I felt like putting it into a big glass mug so you guys can all really see what's going on in here would be most satisfying. Perfect. We're gonna crack open this here beer and put in the, the Newcastle, sorry, not Newcastle, the North Coast Brewing Company's Ale that we should have added before. Just fill her up. And that looks like about what he had added. There it is, the Elder Mancy. Let's see how it is. Uh, but before I do. That is real absinthe, guys. <laughs> you, you said that it was fake. <laughs> We're absinthe and coffee. <laughs> That's really calling into question the whole rest of that. And I assure you, Sam, my absinthe is always real. Was your rum real? The yogurt? I say harumph to you, sir. Harumph, harumph. 
in fairness, though, it did actually all look real. I just kind of assumed you were doing a bit by being shocked about the absinthe and it was all in fun. I don't think that you were, uh, you, were you had been surprised by the absinthe, actually. Anyway, down the hatch and uh, nice knowing you. Oh, man, it's very bad. You know what, it, it's funny, I said it looked like chocolate milk. It tastes, does it taste like chocolate milk? It does not taste like chocolate milk, but kind of does. It has like a texture like a chocolate milk that's gone bad a long time ago. Oh, you get the coffee. That's what that is, I was gonna say it tastes like coffee. It tastes like coffee, because there's coffee in there, there's espresso, and that might be why it tastes a little like chocolate milk and coffee and the yogurt. But the main thing it tastes like all that it tastes like is absinthe, lots of absinthe, very absinthe, gross, bad chocolate milk. Oh, and it leaves you with a really phlegmy texture in the mouth. I mean, just like the world's worst seasonal allergies all at once. You don't get the mezcal or anything other than the absinthe. You only taste absinthe and cream, yogurty, curdled badness. You may be Satan himself, Sam Regal. It gets worse. Oh, it turned real worse. There might be flavor striations in there. The different layers are different. Oh my God, that tasted like a fucking ashtray. Ah. Just like acrid, burning nightmare ash. I cannot save this drink, and I don't want to. I don't want to remake it better. I want... This is what I want to do. And I'm going to burn the glass. You ever have to just rethink your life? How did I get here? How did I wind up here in my garage drinking Elder Mancy's? Up next, I tackled the drink that was the most strongly suggested by critters when I reached out on Twitter uh, for drinks that you guys wanted to see from the show. Uh, it is actually from campaign one. I'm gonna talk about the Sand Kegs Hide right after this. For this drink, this thing, the Sand Kegs Hide, it's clearly a semi-cursed drink in the context of the show, right? Oh, uh, can they help you? Yeah, I'm royalty <laughs> from a far off land. Um, I pride myself on trying the fiercest uh, like spirit in, in the area that I'm visiting. What do you guys pride yourself on? Do you want uh, the Sand Keg's Hide? M Matt describes it as having a very acidic, very acidic taste, very bitter taste. It actually kind of burns your tongue and it goes numb within a matter of seconds. Ah. And then the throat follows the tongue, also going numb. With just about a few sips, become extremely sort of intoxicated but also just kind of numb. I worked on this drink more than any other drink in this episode. Um, it just took a lot to figure this out. I'm gonna go through my process in a second, but I did know from the beginning that it needed to involve two things, okay? The first of which is buzz buttons, otherwise known as Szechuan blossoms. Uh, these guys right here, they show up uh, from time to time in some inventive uh, kind of gastro future pub type stuff. I've used them on the show one time before, when I recreated drinks that were served at uh, Galaxy's Edge in um, Disney's, uh, well, at, at, at Star Wars Land in Disney World, right? Whatever they call that. They cause a straight up tingling kind of numbness. They're actually sometimes called toothache flowers for that reason. They really, they make it feel like there's electricity and numbness running through your mouth when you put them in there. And I guess they're safe to do that because people do. The second thing I knew it had to go in this drink was Malort because Malort is something that everybody basically agrees is pretty cursed, pretty nasty stuff, but it is also actually mirrors the flavor profile here that Matt is describing. It's just extremely bitter. People have been asking me um, to try Malort on the show for a very long time, and here it is for you. Though, if you've watched my live streams on Twitch, you've seen me drink Malort a couple of times. Um, we'll have a little taste of Malort. Um, people are always like, oh, you gotta try Malort because it's like the worst thing in the universe. I mean, <laughs> sure it is. Let's see how bad it is. Um, here is my flavor profile of Malort. I honestly don't hate it. It's really bitter. It actually really, now that I've had it, like this is probably the 10th time I've had it, it kind of really reminds me of Beverly 
that that Coca-Cola product that they have down at Epcot Center um, at the Cool Zone. Reminds me of Beverly, but like a totally unsweetened Beverly. And it makes sense. It is bitter. I mean, it is bitter. It's not great. I swear to you, if you're looking for the worst thing that you can drink to challenge yourself, if you really want to impress your frat bros or whatever with a shot of something, pick up a bottle of Kiao Liang wine. It is orders of magnitude more nightmarish than this. I mean, this is just bitter. This is just bitter. In case you're wondering, by the way, Malort is basically a liqueur that is made from wormwood, which is just very, very, very bitter. And no, nothing like absinthe at all, because even though wormwood is a component of absinthe, the dominant flavor in absinthe is anisette or licorice. Here, we are literally looking at a wormwood flavored liqueur. Um, it might even be better to just call this wormwood bitters, right? Um, Cause that's kind of what it is. I, I don't want the rest of that. Now, I worked on making a Sand Kegs Hide cocktail every which way I could imagine, but I never found something that was perfect because I really wanted an absolutely intense buzz button effect. You know, when you work these guys into a cocktail, that's really tricky to achieve to get like the same intensity of just like biting into one, right? The closest I got was taking these and doing an infusion of them into Everclear and then doing a float of that infused Everclear on top of another drink, but it never really came together the way I wanted it to. So then I took a step back and I watched that scene again and I thought about it. Grog is asked, do you want a glass or a bottle? And he orders a bottle. I'll take two. And I realized this actually shouldn't be a mixed drink or cocktail at all. It should be a liqueur. And that changed everything, right? So I present to you, that's right here. I present to you Sand Kegs Hide. It is truly disgusting in here. That's why I got a stoneware bottle that would cover up its, its disgusting, unappealing nature. Because I think that if you could see Sand Kegs Hide in the bottle, you would never order it at any tavern ever. Also, that looks like something, you know, fairly rustic, like that would belong in a, in a tavern. So I'll put a link to this bottle. I really like this bottle, actually. I'm gonna put a link to this bottle in the uh, pinned comp below. I'll show you now what my Sand Kegs Hide actually came out like. Mmm. It's a lovely swamp water brown. Is that what that color is? Is it something else brown? Let's call swamp water brown. There it is, Sand Kegs Hide. Let me tell you how to make Sand Kegs Hide because I have a very terrible feeling a few of you actually want to. Here's what I did. I got out my scale and a mixing vessel, like this one liter swing top jars that I use for these kinds of infusions. Um, to that, I added 250 grams of Malort and then 90 grams of white sugar. It is a liqueur after all. I did five grams of dried powdered ginger root, though I think actually I could have doubled or even tripled that. You know, Sand Kegs Hide has probably got some basic guidelines on how it's made, but I would bet that from tavern to tavern, they're probably making their own. It's always gonna be varied a little bit, right? You can have your recipe changed a bit like that. Um, and then I did two and a half grams of dried bitter orange peel. Now, the main event in this uh, was 126 grams of buzz button. If you intend to follow along at home, I know that is an insane quantity of these things. It is a huge ingredient dump, but remember, this stuff is 350 gold per bottle. So that makes sense to me. Could you get away with fewer buzz buttons? Maybe, but you'll definitely get less of this drink's main effect. Um, then I simply hit that with an immersion blender until it was truly a foul looking slurry. And I sealed the jar and I let it sit overnight. Next day, I took that out and press the whole thing through a pretty fine filter. I actually used a nut milk bag. Um, and this is what I got. And you know what? When I tasted it, as far as I could tell, it tasted exactly as Matt Mercer described. <laughs> so um, I'm gonna have a small pour of the Sand Kegs Hide now. Mm. Mm. It opens very sweet and then immediately is overtaken by extreme bitterness. It has a funky kind of rotten fish thing going on with its flavor profile and aroma. That comes from the buzz buttons. Um, but then after you swallow it, it is immediately chased by your mouth exploding in a electric tingling sensation that runs right down your throat. Kind of like if you've ever tested a nine volt battery by licking the contact points like that, but everywhere. My whole mouth now is just vibrating with whoa, 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 sensation and thrumming. It is really bitter, but I'm gonna tell you what, it's not so nasty. Like Malort exists, right? And Malort is sort of like a rite of passage apparently amongst like people who relocate to Chicago. You gotta drink a shot of Malort. This isn't so gross, so nasty that I couldn't imagine this being some 
region, particularly when you're talking about like medieval type times, regions um, like delicacy, like a, like their like their proving drink or something like that. It's drinkable, maybe not in great quantities. It would probably make you pretty sick. And I mean, like my mouth is still like buzzing, vibrating, thrumming with electricity um, and salivating uncontrollably. It is pretty freaking high proof too. So I mean, a few mouthfuls of this and you will probably be feeling it. Um, now my lips are buzzing and thrumming and on fire. It's very intense, very, very intense. And that's one of the things that I really, I'm thrilled with because as maybe not pleasurable as it is, it is exactly, I think as close as we can get. I mean, sort of making a drink like Novocaine in it or something like that, right? Which, you know, you can't do. And then some people are thinking like, oh, what if you went minty? Yeah, mint tastes like mint. It doesn't actually make things numb. It's not a sensation. This has a physical sensation applied to it. It really does that. Now, here's the thing. I said that it tasted a bit like fish, but I don't think that's actually accurate to what's happening here. There's a um, there's a, 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 a berry called a miracle berry. And the miracle berry, when you ingest it, it blocks certain receptors in your mouth um, so that everything tastes really sweet. Um, and then actually some things just taste like weird and backwards. But for the most part, everything tastes sweet. I think what's going on here is that this is blocking some other receptors and everything tastes salty. It makes your own saliva taste salty. The whole universe tastes like you're licking salt. And I think that that transitional process, as everything turns to salt, the whole world turns to salt, you read that in your mouth as being kind of fishy. It's not pleasant. It is, this is not a pleasant flavor. And to that, I, I, I applaud myself because I think I, I think I did exactly what Matt asked for here. Um, and I do hope that Matt will try some sand kegs hide. Matt, I hope you'll let me send you some. No, I'm honestly, I'm very pleased with how this came out. I mean, it looks hideously un, unappetizing. There's no question. Nobody wants to drink a cloudy brown liquid like that. Although I guess people drink beer, but this doesn't look like beer. This looks like something that you found in the toilet, okay? And uh, I hope that uh, maybe we can get some people from Critical Role to try this. I don't know. If you guys want to give it a try, Matt, you want to try it? You know? Travis, you want to give it a try? You want to try? You want to try? Laura Bailey, you want to try? Anybody want to try? You want to try? We can, we can make that happen. I can help you out. We can make that happen. This was the Cursed Drinks of Critical Role. Um, I made Sandkegs Hide and Eldermancy. Check out the episode I did on The Good Drinks from Critical Role. Just came out earlier this week. I hope you enjoyed. And if you want to follow along and uh, make Sandkegs Hide yourself, well, uh, I'll put some links in the pin comment below to help you out there. I don't know why you would, but I know you do. I know some of you do. I just know that to be true. Um, until then, you will find me on Twitter at How to Drink, Instagram at How to Drink, Patreon at patreon.com slash how to drink. And um, I'm on Twitch doing live stuff. I'm running tabletop role-playing games. We play Cyberpunk Red. We're, been, we're gonna go back to D&D soon. Um, at twitch.tv slash Greg from HDD. Live stuff here from the bar, just making drinks, hanging out. I'd love to meet you. Swing on by, I'll see you there. Until then, let chaos reign. I think it's let chaos reign. Let's go with that. Let chaos reign. And I've drank in enough. I've had enough. I've had I've had enough sand cakes hide. You know, I'm gonna I am not quite as well off as Grog at 350 a bottle. I'm gonna hold off on that. That's for special occasions. We're just gonna save that for later. Okay. Okay. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye now. <laughs>